This is chapter 10, discussion number 3, The Internal Difficulties of Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire. If you remember a couple of chapters ago, Maria Theresa of Austria was being attacked by Frederick of Prussia. And she went to the Hungarians and said, Look, I need help in order to defend the country. Please help. And the Hungarians like, Okay, we'll come help, but we want some considerations. One of those considerations is that they've got their own capital. They got to run some of their own kingdom. They got to make some of their own rules. Uh, internally, they has had to cooperate in, in, in some different ways of international diplomacy and, and economics. Frank Deak led the Hungarian movement for that separate government. So they had the two separate states. They had two separate kings. Uh, they had the same emperor who was named Francis Joseph. Uh, but they did have to worry about the, the ministries of finance, they had to worry about defense, and they had to worry about the, having the same diplomatic relations with other countries, so they had to cooperate as to foreign affairs. But while this seemed to be a worthwhile idea to have this dual monarchy, the Hungarians were happy, the Austrians were happy, but the people that populated most of this Austria-Hungarian empire were Slavs. And the Slavs weren't getting any consideration in this arrangement. And so they also started looking for independence and started making life difficult for the Austria and Hungarians. So the Ottoman Empire also during this time period was just as fractured. If you take a look at the Balkan Peninsula, which is uh, on the very southern tip of the Balkan Peninsula is Greece. As you start coming up and you're seeing Romania, Bulgaria, uh, and you see Bosnia and Herzegovina, and you see all these current modern-day countries, if you look at a map today, I mean, this was all trying to be run by two empires. The Ottoman Empire, which is having horrible times trying to keep all of its different nationalities cooperating with each other, Austria and Hungary, I mean, we already have a conflict there, and then we're going to have even more conflicts with the, with the Slavic people that are down there. And so these people are having so many difficulties dealing with internal problems, whereas if we see what Germany did, and we see what Italy did, where they were able to unite themselves and start cooperating with each other and really take off, especially Germany, these countries are going to start falling behind. Uh, especially the Ottoman Empire. But as we take a look at um, Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Ottoman Empire was even called the sick man of Europe because it dealt so many problems internally that they couldn't keep up with everyone else. And all the European powers are up having a wonderful time just blowing these people away economically, product, um, productivity-wise, uh, diplomatically, um, and they're just not able to keep up. In fact, sometimes they start looking at the Ottoman Empire or they start looking at the Austro-Hungarians and like, you know, we could stand to take a slice of them. Europe often has a history of some of the major political powers and major military powers taking pieces of parts of countries just because they could. And so now we've, we're have we starting to people say, hey, we can take start slices of them. And we're going to start to see that this is going to be a theme going out of the 1800s and into the early 1900s. This concludes discussion number three, the internal difficulties of Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire of Chapter 10, Nationalism Triumphs in Europe.